Hi guys, once again, this time, question six, signs and principles. Let's have a look what it says. It says, calculate the phase and line currents when three resistors, one per phase, each having a resistance of 35 ohms are connected to a 400 volt three phase supply. And we need to calculate that for star and delta. Okie dokie. So, uh, what I tend to do on these problems is just write out the parameters, fill in what I know, then I write the equations to get what I need to know, and then I fill in the blanks. It's quite a simple process really. Um, I'm not going to go into star and delta on this video, I'm going to assume that you've been taught that already. So, star, star there. So, we got line voltage, phase voltage, line current, I'm going to separate phase current but actually this is going to be the same. In a star system there's sort of nowhere else for the current to go really and that's why they're going to be the same. Uh, so that straight away is going to equal IP and that is going to equal IL. But we still need to know how to calculate, you know, either one of them. And if you know the resistance of one, then we might as well kind of, you know, if this is our star system, and we know the resistance of one of them. So that's a terrible ohm sign that was. Yeah. If we know one of them, then let's kind of zoom in, calculate the phase current, and you know, use that for all of them, because they're going to be the same. So, we'll work out the phase current, and then we know that that's going to be the same as our line current. So to work out a phase current is, is still Ohm's law, to volts divided by whatever's getting in the way. And we just need to decide which volts we're talking about. But we said we're zooming in and we're dealing with phase current, so it makes sense to keep the phase resistance and the phase voltage. So it'll be VP over, we call it RP if you like, phase resistance, phase voltage for phase current. Makes sense? So the equation for that, well, we need VP. We haven't got that yet. We know VL. We know that we're given our supply line voltage. That's 400. And to get here, well, what we're going to do is 400 divided by root 3. Now, this little number's going to be um, cropping up a lot because that's the relationship between them. Um, definitely not a video, I think. But we can get there now. So 400 divided by root 3 gives us, I think we know what it's going to be, don't we? It's 230.94 volts. And now we can complete this. Divided by our phase resistance, which was 35 ohms. And that's going to give us a phase current of um, 6.6. Check my rounding. 6.598. Two significant digits. 6.6. Six. Yeah, I I need to look more than once now. I really am getting bad eyes. Six point six. <coughs> six point six amps, and we know that that's going to be the same as our line current because it is in a star system. Right. So, have we answered all that question? Phase and line currents when three resistors each have an yes. 
So we've got a line voltage, we've got a phase voltage, we've got a line current which is 6.6 .6 amps and we've calculated our phase current which is also 6.6 .6 amps. Happy that is. So let's reset and do it for a delta connection. Now with a delta connection there is more than one way for the current to go. So we're going to have different currents but we've got no way of getting a different voltage so these two voltages are going to be the same and we were given the line voltage in the question 400 volts so we know that that's going to be the same as that and remember that square root of three number is going to crop up any second so delta is where you kind of connect one end at the beginning of the other, so a terrible drawing, sorry. And we've got one phase there, one phase there, one phase there. And we've still got the same resistances, which I'll put in down here. So one of them phases was 35 ohms. Now, same rules apply really, let's zoom into one and uh, calculate our phase current. So again, we'll need our phase voltage and we'll need the resistance of that phase. So, RP, so still Ohm's law. In this case though, our phase voltage is the same as our line voltage, so we've got 400 volts. Divided by the same resistance, 35 ohms. So, we expect to see a higher current here, 400 divided by 35, we've got 11.43 amps. So, that 11.43 amps, which is higher than what it was in stop. Now, in Delta, I said that, you know, it, the current does have options of this being pulled along here, it's, you know, it can split there. So it is different, and the difference is this little number again. So if we're gonna go from phase up to line, line is always the higher one, then we're gonna to have to times that by root three. So to get IL, it's your phase current times root three, which in our case is 11.3. 4.3 amps times root 3, which will give us 19.8. And there we go. So let's just highlight them answers with a brown, so our phase current is there, line current is there, phase voltage is the same as the line voltage in delta, and is that one answered really? I'm going to do a practical video on star and delta, because I think everybody understands it a lot better when you see it, and you can see it being measured and everything. Um, the only other way of kind of doing it is loads of time snapshots and Sometimes that's quite hard to stay with, so I think a practical video would be better. Um, but I'm just getting all these science ones out of the way so I can uh, relax a bit more and help my students get through. We're nearly there, and then we'll get on to something a bit more interesting. For now, question six, done. See ya.